Moving on to the flaps. Um, this is the right flap. Um, it is labeled. So the previous builder did put a label on this. Let me see if it's down here. Yeah, right. And the way this works is there's a torque tube that goes goes through. See the holes? There you go. There's a torque tube that goes down. And then the tube goes to this fitting here. So this is where your aileron torque tube comes out and this is your flat tube. And if I actuate my flat handle, that's 30 degrees, 20 degrees, or excuse me, 10 degrees, 30, 30 degrees, 20 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, there's 20, there's 10. Retracted us all the way up. I don't know if I trust that or not. We'll have to double check it. And then through here, you can see there, that's this is where the aileron torque tube goes through. There's a bolt here that matches up with the bolt hole in the torque tube. And the torque tube is actually attached to the aileron with a, a pass through bolts. Whereas the flap, the only connection you have to it is through this little fitting, I guess you would call it, that comes out of one of the wing ribs. So on the airframe here, this would slide in like this. And you can see the amount of corrosion on that, so that's going to get neat done. Goes in like that mounts up on the torque tube and then this raises and lowers the flaps with this as the pivot point. So problems. One, this is red oak. How do you know it's red oak? Um, see all them holes? See all these little bitty little dots? That's red oak. You want to know how I know it's red oak? Oh, here's a piece of red oak. It has those same little bitty dots. Now this is doesn't have any protective coating on it where that has hopefully been given some sort of protection. Per the plans, this is supposed to be mahogany. And from what I've learned is that the reason why you want to pick mahogany is because red oak doesn't like some adhesives from what I've been told. Now this was here it's held on by six screws three on top three on bottom and then you can see there's a nice row a nice coating of adhesive well mostly a nice coating of adhesive problem is almost none of it stuck to the metal so basically the only thing holding them in were six of these what is that quarter inch screws quarter inch wood screws so that was basically the only thing holding these flaps together so if this were to take a flight load those six screws would be taking all the torque I really don't like this system I don't I mean you're supposed to be able to extend these flaps at 100 knots you know 100 500 10 miles an hour if I read the if I read the specs correctly, oh, well, even if it's 90 miles an hour, those six tiny ass little wood screws, and I guess they were hoping that the uh, this is supposed to be a 3M epoxy two part uh, glue is supposed to take all that torque moment right here. Again, when you bring this down, this and this are the only things. This bearing is seized. I mean it feels like garbage. It's tight. It's grinding. I mean I can get it to move but definitely not smooth. I'll assume that's just more of an age issue than anything else. I mean, it doesn't look like there's... I might be able to pop that out or something. It looks like it was installed correctly. 
but it's just no it, it does not rotate as you'd expect it so that's going to put a lot of a lot of extra stress on your on your flap mechanism because this is not rotating and god only knows what it's going to do the ailerons because the ailerons go through that torque tube through all these things so it probably feel like you had lead weights on the stick but the main issue was that this literally just popped right out I mean there was nothing holding it in other than the screws so I mean I do have I printed up plans where I can get these made I have all the tools um, mahogany is not super expensive but I need, I think, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, so that's ten. Ten on these, and one, I think, three or four. So I'm going to need 14, 14 to 16 of these, depending on what the plans call for. This fitting here is just held in by glue. You can see it there. It's not one that. Let me see. There you go. It's just held in by a blob of something. I don't know if that's a nut or what. And the welding doesn't look horrible, but it's not. It's also not really perpendicular to the surface. I mean, if I look at it here, on my viewfinder, I have some uh, some lines that help me. I guess it's okay. It's off like 10 degrees, 10, 15 degrees from vertical. So, but if you look at it, it's steel. It definitely does have corrosion. I mean, they painted it and everything, but see, look at the corrosion on that. So this is made to take uh, some flight loads. Otherwise, they would have used aluminum or something else. So, but that's that. So we're going to take this apart. I got to drill out 11 billion of uh, these rivets I just want to try to preserve the skin I might reuse it I mean the skin does have some boogers on it I guess it's just I think this is just paint I mean it's not a huge issue but I mean it's definitely not four foot so I would have to get a four by eight sheet and then cut it and then bend it, which is not a huge issue, but so here's this. And when it comes down to taking this right one off, this would be the outboard. I'll go ahead and I'll videotape it just to see if it just pops out again. But again, a used kit. This is 20 years old. And these are just some of the things. And if this is what a 20 year old kit's like, imagine the ones that are sitting around for 10, 15 years what condition they're going to be in. So, uh, we'll start drilling stuff out and we'll see how it goes.